For more than three and a half centuries, at least 12 million men, women, and children were captured and compelled to migrate from their African homelands to the Americas. This massive forced migration changed forever the face and character of the modern world. This is known as the Atlantic Slave Trade. The Atlantic Slave Trade is one of the most significant aspects of both African and American historical developments. The slave trade was cruel and gruesome, and the enslavement of African was brutal, manipulative, and dehumanizing. Its impact is still felt today within the African areas that experienced the forced migration, but specifically in the New World, where the descendants of African slaves form an important element within the national societies. The impact of the Atlantic slave trade is still very much present in modern day society, as it was one of the longest and most relentless assaults on the life, integrity, and dignity of human beings in history. The forced movement of the peoples of Sub-Saharan Africa to the New World was the consequence of an apparently unlimited demand for labor, for the European colonists sought to exploit the land and the resources of the New World for capital profits. Although there were between 80 and 100 million Indians in the Western Hemisphere at the time of our discovery, this population was vulnerable to the introduction of European diseases and unable to survive, therefore deemed inadequate and invaluable. By the end of the first century of European colonization, no more than 10 million Indians were left in the New World. This population decimation further increased the demand for labor in the Americas. Consequently, when the New World looked for a new source of laborers, it turned to Sub-Saharan Africa, which was the closest source of a large amount of slaves that could be obtained readily and cheaply. During the 17th century, North America was settled by the British colonists. Dutch traders were vital suppliers of both capital and slave labor. The first shipment of African slaves to British North America arrived in 1619 and was carried from the West Indies by a Dutch vessel. During this time, the system of the plantation was established in North America, and the African slave trade was essential to the country's development and progress. The capture, transportation to the coast, sale to the Europeans, and subsequent sale and delivery to the inland American slave owners are all relevant to the Atlantic slave trade. Yet, the Middle Passage, the crossing from Africa to America, has remained the best known and most controversial part of the entire trade. Once the demand for slaves was acknowledged in North America, the capturing of men, women, and even children up and down the coast of Africa began. They were captured, chained, and imprisoned, and left without care for weeks, months, and sometimes as long as a year. They were kept in holding places known as barracoons. Then they were finally released from the barracoons, thinking that possibly the worst was over. However, they were very wrong. Without knowing it, they were about to embark on a journey full of much suffering and harsh conditions that no human or even animal should ever have to experience. The Middle Passage The Middle Passage was one section of a three-part trade route, commonly known as the Triangle Trade. On the first leg of the long journey, European ships brought manufactured goods to Africa. On the second, they transported African men, women, and children to the Americas. And on the third leg, they exported to Europe the sugar, rum, cotton, and tobacco produced by the enslaved labor force. And then the cycle repeated itself. The Middle Passage referred to the second leg, in which they transported Africans to the Americas. Traders would design and plan their boat for the Middle Passage so that it could hold as many slaves as possible. Traders would pack more than 800 men, women, and children on a ship that was supposed to hold only 350 people with some cargo. This left the slaves very little room to move once boarded on the ship. To add to the discomfort of being crammed into an unbelievably small space, slaves were stripped naked for the duration of the voyage and forced down under death amidst the filth. Slaves were forced to live in these conditions, chained up for months without access to bathroom or other amenities of human life. The conditions were far from ideal. The ships were extremely hot and unsanitary. The slaves were subject to anything the crew wanted them to do. As Oleada Ekbiana, a survivor of the Middle Passage, said, the closeness on the plates and the heat of the climate added to the number in the ship, which was so crowded that each had scarcely enough room to turn himself, almost suffocated us. The slaves were physically and mentally abused in every way possible, including sexual abuse for the women and boys were often used for the pleasure of the crew. Considering the fact that the ships were so unsanitary and overpacked, 
disease spread quickly and easily. In order to protect their cargo, ship members would often throw the sick overboard. Although this may seem extremely cruel, some slaves actually chose to throw themselves overboard in order to escape the ship, as they considered suicide was better than the hell on earth that they were living in. A slave would purposely not eat in order to try to starve themselves to death, but the crew would whip them until they ate. In Oleada's memory, the crew would flog anyone unmercifully for attempting to prefer death to slavery. At least 20% of slaves died from various epidemics or committed suicide by the end of the Middle Passage. If the slaves were able to survive the unfathomable circumstances of their journey from their African homelands to the Americas, upon arrival they would be put immediately to work and fed in order to look healthy and gain strength. When they were deemed strong and able enough for work, they would be washed up and auctioned off, often to plantations in southern North America. Despite the harsh and unfathomable conditions of the Middle Passage, during the 18th century, slaves were recognized as a perishable cargo whose death meant a debit. They were treated as a commodity to be bought and sold for profit. This gave those who were involved in the buying and selling of slaves a strong incentive to maintain the lives and health of slaves, as slaves were deemed necessary to the development of North America. The development of the tobacco industry was the main reason for North America's involvement in the Atlantic slave trade, as African slave labor was the responsible for the cultivation of tobacco on the plantations of Virginia and Maryland. However, African slave labor was also demanded for the cultivation of rice and indigo on the plantations of South Carolina and cotton on the plantations of the southern states. The Middle Colonies and New England sold foodstuffs, forest products, and farm animals in the slaveholding West Indies, but also New Yorkers, Virginians, and Carolinians were slavers, some outfitting voyages, others acting as agents and traders. Thus, the continent of North America became increasingly involved in the Atlantic slave trade. Tobacco became the first crop worked by African slave labor on the large plantations in the New World. Along with tobacco, the southern colonies of continental British America were soon producing rice, some sugar, and finally cotton on plantations worked by slaves. These industries were able to develop on the basis of this slave labor. Tobacco was an optimal crop in both ecological and economic terms, as the climates of Virginia and Maryland proved to be ideal for the growth of tobacco, and Virginia tobacco became a capable competitor to the Cuban tobaccos, which were in limited supply. And the capital generated by this export was sufficient to finance the importation of slave labor on a major scale. The southern colonies were not the only areas to participate in slave trade, however. In New England, the slave trade formed the very basis of economic life. The vast sugar, molasses, and rum trade, shipbuilding, the distilleries, a great many of the fisheries, the employment of artisans and seamen, even agricultural, all dependent on the African slave trade. New England played a significant role in the slave trade. Massachusetts and Rhode Island participated in a triangle trade of their own, which revolved around the rum distilling industry. Owners of slavers carried slaves to the south and brought home naval stores for their shipbuilding, or to the West Indies and brought home molasses, or to other colonies and brought home hogsheads. The molasses was made into the highly prized New England rum and shipped to those hogheads in Africa for more slaves. This justifies New England's significant in the slave trade with the rum distilling industry in particular. Shipbuilding and rum distilling, the leading industries in New England, were entirely shaped by the slave trade and were linked to many maritime activities. These industries helped pave the way for the establishment of the cotton textile industry, which together with the production of cotton textile machinery became the leading sector of U.S. industrialization in the 19th century. Cotton produced and expanded dramatically in the United States, and cotton became the largest slave labor crop on the North American continent. The abundance of precious crops and goods in the New World, particularly sugar, tobacco, precious metals, coffee, indigo, rum, and cotton, was extracted by black labor imported from Africa through the capitalistic enterprise of Western Europe.
Negro slavery was essential to the carrying on of this commerce, which in turn was fundamental to making of the modern world. The Atlantic slave trade laid the foundation for more modern capitalism. The most worrying legacy of African slavery in the New World is the persistent oppression of all people of African descent in the Americas. Slavery has and continues to have lasting and adverse effects on the black population of society. Race is a social construction. Racial bias was the main reason why black Africans remained in perpetual servitude. British Americans inherited deeply rooted notions that the blackness of skin color connotated filthness, sin, baseness, ugliness, evil, and the devil. Blacks were heathens, lechers, and barbarians. On a national scale, racial configuration is an integral part of American society. It has been historically formed and presently reconstructed, imposed, and justified through everyday actions. The thriving American economies in the 19th century drew free migrants from Europe. While the African slaves performed the grueling and unwanted work, the Europeans enjoyed the benefits, keeping the slaves oppressed in the system of slavery. However, even after the emancipation of slaves in the United States in December 1865, Blacks were still prevented from attaining authority and even basic resources due to legal and various forms of discrimination they faced. Consequently, the process of capitalist accumulation passed them by giving a rise to a black population in the Americas, generally characterized by poverty, extreme deprivation, lack of education, disease, and high rates of crime. Many blacks continue to encounter racism and injustice as these negative portrayals still exist today. Black populations have faced such discrimination and have continued to be oppressed by society. While African Americans today did not endure the hardships and challenges experienced by their ancestors, the effects of the slave trade on African Americans continue to affect their socioeconomic status in society. In the words of President Obama, our nation has been stained by the sin of slavery. We must recognize this and work together as a society in order to overcome this oppression.